uh, so moving on to the uh, exercise so again the solution book is available uh, you can directly click on this to open it in colab uh, those who are not able to uh, so let me first try here so even on colab there there is some issue with torch geometric so if, first of all check if you are able to run this uh, first thing uh, correctly so this will first install this uh, torch geometric libraries and its dependencies that are required so if any error occurs that this would turn to red and then uh, you will not be able to run this notebook in the colab so for those who are not able to run this in colab you can download the py or the python file uh, and that you can run in the native python uh, uh, you can say native Python exe. So for that also, you can install directly using pip install uh, torch geometric and all this. So this would get installed easily. So yeah, we are able to run this. So once this is installed, so for this uh, uh, particular example, we are using Cora dataset. So Cora is just a citation network database uh, data set that is available to this one. Okay data set because why we didn't went uh, with an example of 3d model it is uh, time consuming and it is difficult to present in uh, uh, short, such a short uh, lab session uh, where we have to train as well and we want to evaluate and ex uh, show as well the data uh, how we are training and how the model is evaluated so for that is difficult to uh, use uh, 3D data set directly currently. So we are using this example. This is well-known example. So just for understanding sake, uh, you can just uh, have a look. So for this data set, it's actually a citation like uh, citations of different research papers based on neural networks, machine learnings, uh, deep learning. And based on that, they have created a graph basically. Uh, so first we'll go ahead with uh, our custom uh, GCN layer implementation. So here we will use this particular technique where we calculate the degree matrix. Uh, we use the adjacency matrix to calculate this. So this is basically a constant value. And uh, this is the function signal. Uh, you can see the feature vector of the previous uh, layer you can see and these are the weight parameters that will be trained basically uh, so you remember in the previous exercise we uh, manually set the weight of the linear layer as identity matrix so we don't want to do that we want to train our network to find these values and this is the non-linear activation function uh, which will then give the output of the current layer you can say l plus one layer so going on to the gcn layer so message passing is uh, uh, you can say a module in pytorch geometry uh, where you need to implement uh, the again forward method and the message method so this is basically again derivation of the torch nn module but this is more optimized for this uh, geometric uh, deep learning things or uh, graph neural network uh, architectures. Uh, so we want to basically add one linear layer. This is linear transformation layer. So again, uh, this is the example, uh, you can say solution file. There is a exercise file as well, where you need to do uh, fill these to do layers. So whoever is interested, uh, can work on the exercise file and then uh, uh, maybe see the solution. But as I guess we have got less time, I will just run over to the solution file only. So as already mentioned, so for graph convolution layers, we have to add a self connection. So for that, what we do, uh, PyTorch Geometric has a helper function add self connection, or you can say add self loop. Uh, this will basically add self loops uh, to the data. 
at once that is done we then uh, call this linear layer that is there and we uh, linearly project those particular uh, feature vectors so we calculate the degree matrix so for that as well pytorch has got a helper function degree this will calculate the degree matrix of the graph uh, we then uh, so it's raised to minus one by two so that has been uh, taken care using the power function and this is just the normalizing term so you remember one by under root uh, the degree i degree j term so that is there and we do the propagation of this and this is the normalization term so what actually message will do is with message will consider the jf node uh, so for example you are going from i to j so for that uh, the jf node so in this graph uh, from 1 to 2 so xj would be this the second uh, node basically so once we have created this uh, gcn layer uh, we'll create a network so this is again torch and n module so this is the forward propagation uh, uh, module we implement and here we implement our gcn layer that we have implemented here and the output of the first layer is 16 so as this is 16 the input of the second layer would be 16 output would be number of classes that are there so this is just the initialization of the layers and the actual uh, implementation is done in the forward method so here we call the first uh, graph convolution then we apply nonlinear uh, relu activation so dropout is again uh, another term where we uh, in so we will be learning machine learning will have a better idea uh, we randomly ignore some things uh, some nodes by training so that is there and this is the convolution another layer and at the last we have the softmax layer uh, to get the single output basically or you can calculate the probability, normalized probability. So this was our graph convolution network. So now PyTorch has got, uh, PyTorch Geometric has got its own uh, GCN convo layers. So internally it has implemented uh, the GCN convolution uh, from the paper, similar to what we have. And we will use that uh, for this uh, GCN network PyTorch model. So here, instead of our uh, GCN layer, we are using GCN Convo. And uh, normalization, you can do as true test, up to you, true or false. So depending upon this, uh, there would be slight uh, performance difference. And in the forward layer, basically, it's the same thing that uh, we have done for our network. But the main difference is here we are using pre implemented layer of convolution. And in the previous one, we are using our own uh, custom in, uh, implementation. Once that is done, what we will do uh, this is just a helper function to plot the graph. So, this is the training method uh, uh, which will be used for both uh, networks basically, where we pass in the model and the optimizer and the data that we want to train on. So it is same thing as already discussed in the previous lab. Uh, we just do uh, optimizer, uh, then we do backward propagation and we step. And once that is done, we can place the training or you can say validation accuracy and uh, testing accuracy. And we'll print those accuracies and for in the graph form. So, yeah. And in the testing method, it is again similar. Uh, we are calculating the between number of corrected predicted, uh, correct predicted data and uh, false predicted data. Based on that, uh, we generate the accuracy values. Okay, so now this is the main uh, thing. So 
up till now what we have done is uh, model uh, model layer construction and everything so now what we do we want to load the pura data set that is available in python geometry so in data set there is a plantoid uh, uh, function which has got such type of data sets uh, of uh, you can say citation data set pura mutant enzymes etc so you can load it so you can provide a path where it will be uh, downloaded temporary if uh, it is available already at this location it will not download and it will directly use that data set at that point so you can just uh, uh, plot this data set and uh, this is just the device so for ours it would be uh, cpu for now so you can see this has been downloaded from the where it has been hosted and once that is done, uh, we will plot a graph of the data set. Okay. So this is there. So you can uh, maybe if you you work in a Python environment, you'll be better able to zoom it uh, a little bit. But it's okay. So uh, these are nodes, basically, uh, are the research papers, and the links are basically the citation they have done. So those will have edges in between them. And uh, uh, the colors basically represent different classes of uh, paper, for example, neural network, uh, deep learning, etc. So once that is done, uh, what we will do is uh, uh, we will create our own GCN network that we have created and we will also create uh, and we will just pass the data set to it for training and we'll just cache the training and testing accuracies for our data set. So we have done for 100 epochs. So loss is 0 0.05, training accuracy is one, testing accuracy is around 0 0.78. So around 78, 79% uh, uh, testing accuracy we have achieved. And this is with our custom uh, convolution implementation. Now if we go ahead with the PyTorch uh, uh, implementation, Okay, so uh, we have also trained the pre implemented PyTorch uh, GCN implementation. And it's the same thing. We have just uh, passed in the same data set uh, to that uh, pre implemented layer and trained the model. So we have also cached is uh, test accuracy and training accuracy. So, same, we have uh, ran the training for 100 epochs. The loss is slightly better than ours, uh, 0 0.035. Uh, accuracy is one, and the uh, testing accuracy is also slightly better than ours. Uh, it is around 79.3, so around 80% uh, accurate uh, with the pre-implemented uh, pre CCN layer. Now you can plot this uh, training and validation accuracies of uh, both the models. So. This uh, blue one is the custom uh, GCN train accuracy. So the blue one is our, our training accuracy. And uh, the orange one is the validation accuracy. So this is our accuracy, it's slightly lower than what uh, uh, pre-implemented uh, GCN accuracy we have. Yeah, so this was a brief example, uh, our lab session for uh, implementing our own GCN layer and comparing it with the uh, pre-implemented GCN layers. Uh, so, and questions related to this, so with
anyone any questions so here we have used the uh, android or you can say cora data set but the same thing if you want to work on uh, a 3d data set then you will have to think how that 3d data set uh, would be consumed so even uh, i am personally uh, researching uh, or you can say working on a project uh, my personal project uh, where i use point data for classification and using the uh, convol graph convolution layer means based on the graph neural network okay. so current uh, point net implementation is different and this what i am working on is also different so the scope is huge there is lot of things to research currently and uh, yeah any questions anyone has so after this i'll just show you one quick uh, a demo of uh, my work actually uh, it's still working progress but i will just uh, run the inference for you to for an example but once everyone is done with the lab you let me know Has anyone completed with the lab three? Okay, okay. Uh, Darshil, continue. You let me know once uh, you have done. Also, these labs are available at GitHub. So anyone who later on requires it can download it or fork from that. So. It's no hurry to understand everything just right now. Okay, yeah. So uh, this is uh, one of uh, my personal uh, work that I am uh, trying out uh, currently uh, for points classification. Uh, for now, I have used the model net ten data set uh, that is available. So uh, it has got uh, ten uh, categories of uh, mesh data available, but I work on points for now. So I have trained a model uh, based on GCN and PointNet, uh, both you can say. And uh, currently I'm able to get accuracy of around 85 to 80%, but uh, still it is work in progress. Uh, it's not completed. So what I will do is I will just take a random uh, mesh from this uh, the data set. Uh, it's, so the data set basically has got two sections. One is train section and another is test section. So this training data was already used by me for training my model, uh, but the testing data was not used. So for uh, classification, I can use any of this randomly. Uh, so maybe you can, uh, I will just try if that works or not. So maybe you can suggest uh, which Section, uh, which uh, class I should try for uh, point, point classification. Anyone can suggest anything from this uh, for now. Anyone? Okay. Okay, so Darshil says so far. So I will go for so far and the test uh, data set. So uh, randomly I will just uh, uh, select any file for uh, classification if it works or not. So I will use this uh, mesh file. So first uh, it will show us a mesh uh, view of this particular file. And based on that, uh, we'll use that data for uh, inference basically so uh, i have got uh, cuda installed on my system so uh, it basically uses uh, for the first time it takes a little time to uh, get started
And yes, I have I haven't used PyTorch. I've used uh, TensorFlow and Keras. So, are you able to see this uh, sofa mesh, or you can say sofa model? So we'll try and see if uh, we are able to classify it correctly or not. Okay, uh, so it has misclassified it as a dresser. So uh, that didn't work well. So maybe we'll try some another model uh, and check if uh, we are getting correct result for that or not. So we'll go to some another model. Maybe chair is you see we'll just randomly select. Uh, Mesh based uh, networks, right? or uh, yeah, so uh, I'm using mesh to generate uh, point uh, data basically and then add some noise during uh, training. So oh, this are point. basically public available data set, so it's easily available for uh, prototype purpose. Right, model net is quite uh, popular. Uh, correct, correct. Your network is uh, working on uh, individual, it's basically working on point cloud or mesh? Money on points. Oh. Okay. We are able to classify this as a chair. Correctly. Okay. So maybe one more we can try uh, some another category, maybe monitor. Let's see if we are able to classify this or not. So this is just uh, a use case uh, that I'm trying out. So uh, as we are not able to provide lab for such session, uh, so I thought it would be useful if you can see actual uh, application that is uh, running based on what we have learned today. And uh, so that would be helpful for you all instead of just, so this is a monitor. Now let's see if we are able to classify it or not. Oh, we are classifying it as a nightstand. So yes, as I mentioned, currently the accuracy is around 80 to 85 percent. Uh, I don't remember exactly, but uh, training it more would make it more robust and will increase the accuracy. So this has been uh, trained for just uh, 100 epochs, you can say. Uh, so if I train it for some more epochs, uh, then maybe uh, the accuracy would incre increase uh, in a better way compared to what it is right now. So yes, any question anyone has uh, related to this or any uh, feedback related to the session that has been conducted would be good enough for me. So what should we uh, is the session helpful to you and uh, how did you like the session? This is also misclassified. So you see the resemblance between this table and the monitor. So in the monitor, the previously which we ran, it has also had similar uh, shape basically. So such type of example are very helpful to identify if uh, uh, our model is working correctly or not. So at this point of time, this is still in work in progress. And so probably there's much improvement required for the prototype as well. So yeah, uh, I'll look you just unmute and just let me know uh, uh, feedback regarding the session. And the test files, or you can say the lab 
section files are would be available on the GitHub, so you can just refer it afterwards as well. So, sir, in this project that uh, uh, we are uh, only we are giving a mesh means uh, of dot of file, right? Uh, yeah, you can get an STL file as well uh, to this, uh, but the model net data set, uh, we have got only off files, so I'm just using it for currently demonstrating you. Okay, and uh, internally it uh, it is creating uh, interrelationship between points, or we can say, uh, right, okay. Correct. And then based on these all points uh, properties, it will classify these uh, more, this object, like say it's your monitor or chair. Correct, correct, yes, true. So uh, the point data set is not uh, easily or freely available which on which we can train our model. So this is the best way where we can use the mesh data, data set uh, that is extensively available and very popular and uh, use it for our purpose. Final questions from the participants, comments? Yeah, do let me know your feedback, uh, participants. That would be helpful for us. is correctly classified so uh, actual input to our model is this particular uh, thing uh, right. yeah. it's not the mesh right. yes correct and we also do add some noise to the actual mesh so that uh, we can generalize the model so how are you uh, sorry how are you working? Avoid what? Uh, not able to do. Overfitting? Yes, correct. Yeah. Because if the model data are very clean, then they could not generalize to the actual uh, data that is available. Nice. Noise is required. 